I've always maintained that there's a certain elegance to be found in simplicity, especially when it comes to filmmaking. Sometimes the most enjoyable movies come out of the most basic of concepts, like a guy that has to rescue a kid from a war-torn city, or two climbers get stuck at the top of a high tower, or in this case, a gold miner that has his hall stolen by German soldiers and decides to get it back. Sisu is one of those perfectly simple, unashamedly over-the-top and wonderfully enjoyable action movies that used to form the backbone of cinema, but these days seem to have become rarer than rockin' horse turds. Or successful Marvel movies. <laughs> it's a glorious, proudly ridiculous throwback to the low-budget action flicks of the 70s and 80s that I could best describe as the love child of John Wick and Rambo set in World War II, starring a guy who looks like Santa Claus on steroids. But goddamn, is it fun to watch. The movie kicks off in the dying days of 1944, with the tide of war turning against the Axis, the German armies conducting a fight and retreat across northern Finland, using brutal scorched earth tactics to delay the Soviet forces. None of this matters much to our main man, Atami Korpi though, who's decided to turn his back on the entire conflict and concentrate on mining for gold deep in the Finnish wilderness. His determination eventually pays off when he happens across a rich seam of the bright yellow stuff more than enough gold to make him rich for the rest of his days. Before long, he's on his way into town with a saddlebag full of the stuff, but unfortunately, he crosses paths with a German army column going the other way. And when I say unfortunately, I mean it's unfortunate for them, because when they spot the gold and try to take it from him, it doesn't exactly end well. What follows is a kind of brutal cat and mouse game where the Germans throw everything they have at the guy, determined to kill him and get their hands on the gold at any cost. In the course of the movie, he gets shot, stabbed, blown up, drowned, hung and even set on fire. But none of it seems to stop him. Apparently it's just impossible to kill the bastards. He absolutely refuses to give up no matter what happens and as the German casualties mount, they begin to suspect that what they're fighting might not even be human. Now, you might think it would be difficult for a movie to be both over the top and stripped back and minimalistic, and yet that's exactly what Sisu manages to deliver. Dialogue is kept to a minimum even amongst the German soldiers, there's long stretches where nothing gets said at all, and the protagonist doesn't even open his mouth until the final scene. Instead, you're given a lot of time to just soak up the vibe and the atmosphere of the world you're part of, the wide empty landscapes that seem to contain nothing at all, the occasional gutted building or burned out vehicle with small smoking bodies still inside, the lines of dead civilians hung from telephone poles on the way into town, little windows into the carnage and brutality taking place all across Europe as the war grinds towards its climax. All of this stuff helps to build up a sense of isolation and desolation. This is a place at the very edge of the world, far from anything worth fighting over, where a man can lose himself in the endless wilderness and never be found again. And it makes the arrival of the German troops all the more jarring when it finally happens. But once they do show up, this is where the killing begins and it's absolutely glorious to watch. Corpy uses absolutely everything at his disposal, from knives to pickaxes to submachine guns and landmines to even the odds, taking them down in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat or picking them off one at a time. Despite their superior numbers and firepower, nothing they throw at him seems to be enough to stop him. Even when he gets severely wounded, he just kind of patches himself up and carries on. Now let's be real here, Sisu is definitely a movie you need to go into with the right expectations. If you're hoping for a grounded and believable war film, then well, you're probably going to have a tough time with this one, especially towards the end when Corpy's abilities border on the superhuman. The action is gory, over the top and stylized, but damn, it's fun to watch him plow through enemy soldiers like a Spartan from 300, or silently take down scouts and sentries foolish enough to go after him. And I love how this guy isn't really fighting for anything noble or complex, he literally just wants his gold back and he's determined to get it no matter how many people he has to kill or how much he gets injured. And all of this stuff ties into the title of the movie, which the opening crawl helpfully explains is a Finnish word meaning sheer bloody-minded grit and determination, even in the face of impossible odds. Apparently it's meant to be a key element of their national character, and it's personified in this case by one man who just fucking refuses to quit. And hats off to the actor playing him, the dude's like 65 years old but he's still built like a brick shithouse, and well, he looks like he's lived a life that's been neither short nor easy. Compare this for a moment to the soft, pampered, effeminate pussies that laughably pretend to be action heroes in Hollywood today and you begin to realise what we're missing over here in the West. 
The rest of the cast all do a perfectly good job too. None of the Germans get a huge amount of character development, but to be fair, Axel Henny at least serves as a worthy opponent. He's ruthless and cunning and willing to do whatever it takes to win. His character's well aware that Germany's losing the war and that when it's all over, he and his men are likely to stand trial for the crimes they've committed on the Eastern Front. The gold offers a way out for him, if not for the men under his command. But again, he doesn't give a shit about that. He's just out for number one. The entire film was made on a budget of just 6 million euros, which is fucking mind-boggling to me. Marvel probably spends more than that on their craft services. For the most part, the combat scenes look excellent, and they're clearly directed by a man who knows how to stage an action sequence. I suspect they used a fair bit of CGI rather than pyrotechnics to save money. The remote location was almost certainly chosen because it's easier to film than in a busy town or city. And well, if you believe that this is what a World War II German tank looked like, then I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you need to read some more history books though. But overall, I think the film looks remarkably good for such a modest production, and it always warms my heart when you see movies that manage to do a lot with very little. Ultimately, while Sisu isn't going to be a life-changing experience for anyone, I don't think it really cares. It's a movie that's there to have fun with its simple premise, deliver some gory and explosive action sequences, and give you a kick-ass protagonist that's as entertaining as he is memorable. And it does all of those things without making a fuss about it. So if you're looking for a solid, entertaining throwback to a a different generation of filmmaking, then I don't think Sisu is going to let you down. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.